this morning and is greeted by the sunrise. I made a simple meal and enjoyed a moment of peace and stillness. I stepped into my vehicle and joined a million others traveling to work today. And I arrived safely. I spent most of the day at my job, doing the same familiar tasks that greet me every day. The work that provides for my needs. I took a walk in the park received a smile from a stranger. I picked up a few groceries. I spoke with my parents. And then I met a friend for coffee. I turned on the radio in my car. I sent a message to someone a thousand miles away. I washed my clothing. I returned home. A very day. Everything I've experienced today could be considered unremarkable, but they are all profound blessings, the fingerprints of your hand. Help me to grasp the wonder in the small and the simple to notice the miracles which surround me constantly, to see the beauty in the commonplace and take nothing for granted. Teach me to make gratitude a lifestyle, one which flows into love, rejoicing, and thankfulness. Every moment that I draw breath, Well, welcome to those of you again in the room, those of you watching uh, online, and uh, every day, little ordinary things make, as the video said, make my heart, make my attitude be a, an attitude, a lifestyle of thanksgiving. And uh, th since Thanksgiving is coming up, we thought, well, let's go ahead and do a, a sermon series, not just on Thanksgiving uh, or about Thanksgiving one day, but let's talk about something, Thanksgiving, 365 days a year, because that's what we can be walking in, especially as Christ followers. So over the next three weeks, we're going to take a look at different aspects of Thanksgiving and gratitude. And um, to help you, if you want to do a personal study, um, sort of like what we did with uh, the Best of Friends, uh, as you go out right to the, to the left, as you go out in the middle doors, um, there, are, there will be work w weekly discussion questions that even if you want to do as, your, as a family, that go along with the, the sermon, sort of like what we did uh, at the first of the year. Um, but again, Thanksgiving, we can be thankful for all the little things in our life, but it, it seems like we're more thankful for the big things that happen in our life. So yesterday I was at a coffee shop, big surprise there. Um, Saturdays is when I kind of hang out and, and kind of think about and prep for uh, Sunday morning. And I was talking to the barista, the person who makes the coffee, and, and I, I said, well, how's your, how's life? How's it going? What's, what's going on with you? And he said, well, it's been really a, a busy time. He said, I was able to purchase my first home. I got married and I had a baby all within 12 months. And then he leaned in and he said, and in that order. And I thought, okay, okay, good. <laughs> That's great. Um, but again, I'm really excited for this series because even though it, sometimes it doesn't seem like it, we have so, you and I, we have so much to be thankful for. You know, we have so much to be thankful for. And if you grasp onto God's concepts and principles over the next couple weeks that we're going to be talking about, your life is going to be transformed. Now, I don't say those things often. I don't have those big power statements. But this time around, I believe it to be true. Well, I believe it to be true other times. But this time too, 
It is true. If you grasp onto and really internalize and chew on the concepts that God has for us over the next couple of weeks and apply them into your life, your life will never, ever, ever be the same. It will never be the same if you adopt what we're going to be talking about. It'll change the way you view the world. It'll change the way you interact with other people. And just your internal stress level is going to decrease. How many of you, wouldn't it be great, especially after this election cycle, to have our stress levels kind of decrease a little bit, right? Yeah. And it's it really, this whole series is represented by something as simple as this. Just a simple thank you card, right? I, I looked up uh, Hallmark and, and, and um, asked, you know, what, what, what are the top-selling cards that they sell? And number one is... Thank you, birthday, and this, but close behind it are thank you cards. And when you receive a thank you card, you, you feel different inside, right? You feel different inside. When you write a thank you card and send it to someone, there's something inside of you that changes a little bit for the positive. How, how many, raise your hand if you've received a thank you card within the last month or so. Nobody. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm so sad for you. Just kidding. How many of you have written one and sent one? Written. Written. Not this. But actually, it doesn't matter. But, but you know that this, the, the thank you card really represents what we're going to be talking about because it's a giving of thanks, but it's also a receiving of thanks. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Thanks, 365, all year Long And our, kind of, our cornerstone verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Let's read this together. Ready? Go. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Give thanks in everything, Paul says in, this, in, this, in the letter to Thessalonians. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks. And the emphasis here isn't, I'm just going to thank God. Oh, I'm just so thankful for my life. In the original language, this is actually that whole give thanks in all circumstances is a very specific thing. There's more power in the specifics of giving thanks for something rather than in just a general thank you. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy at the end of the, the service, I, I kind of greet as people are going out and, and occasionally someone would say, good sermon, taught her good, good service. And I love that. I think that's great. But the ones that I remember are when someone says, even from this morning, someone says, I, what you said here really impacted what I'm going to have to go into the next, in, in this next week. How you said this specific is so, was so powerful to me. It got me thinking about that. For me and, and for you, it's so, it's so much more powerful when we give thanks to God or t to others specifically for something. Because sometimes when we say, oh, thank you, God, for my life, thank you, you know, it, it's, it sort of loses, like, the, the, the power of it. I love little kids' prayers when they say thank you, right? When you say prayers at the, at the end of the night and they're just kind of learning how to pray, there is nothing off the table. Thank you, God, for my butterfly, for my pencil, for my poop. Thank you for the food. I mean, they just list it, and they don't care. And I love that. I think we as old, old adults, we, we lose that sense of specificness, and there's power in that. Um, it's God's will for you in Christ Jesus, those of us who are believers. And why, why would God say that? This idea of con this concept that he created and outlines all through scripture, why is he so big on being and, and cultivating a thankful attitude? Well, he knows something that we pretty much know, but here are the words for it. Thankfulness creates gratitude, which generates contentment that causes peace. Whew, isn't that great? And, and here's what's great. Even if you're not a Christian, even if you don't believe in God or you're still trying to figure it out or you don't go to church or whatever, this is powerful stuff just for you. God gave us this gift of this thing called being thankful. Um, because what this means is those words are very impactful. The word thankfulness is actually the state of being thankful. It's, it's, being, it's stepping into a place of thanksgiving. And from that, 
Gratitude is the action or reaction. So if you're feeling thankful and it's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta write a card. You're writing a gratitude card, really, rather than a thankful card. Thankfulness is the starting, per, starting point or the place you come from. Gratitude, then, is the action. Contentment, then, oh, contentment is the result of just giving your thanks and gratitude away. You feel content. You feel content. Did you know that gratitude and thankfulness, gratitude... And fear cannot exist at the same time. Do you know that? Psychologists have done m numerous studies looking at fear and, and how do you break fear and, and, and does it, does it, what is, can it coexist with? And they found that you cannot be fearful and grateful at the same time. Isn't that interesting? And, and uh, vice versa, when you're grateful, it eliminates or at least significantly reduces fear in your life. So here's kind of how this works. Um, for a, a lot of people throughout our, our, uh, our nation and our world actually really fearful about before and after the election. There's a, there's a lot of that, uh, a lot of fear. What's going to happen? It's not new. Every election, one side or the other is afraid of the, uh, of the, the, the person coming in that they didn't vote for. It's, a, it's nothing new. So instead of being afraid of the election, you can be great, if you change it to being grateful, thank you, God, for this fear of what's going to happen because it motivates you. It changes it to motivation rather than fear. It changes fear from being a captor in your life to being a counselor in your life. It changes fear from holding you and, and keeping you from stepping into the God-given purpose that he would have for you. And allows you to go, okay, I'm using, I'm, I'm grateful for this fear because now it's a counselor to, to, to make me be aware and be concerned or motivate me to action. And this is actually biblical. If you remember the New Testament, Paul and Silas were arrested for, for uh, speaking the gospel out loud uh, in a public setting. And so they were arrested, put in the worst prison uh, in the area, and they were bound with chains, they were bound to other guards, and, and it was a bad situation. And what did they do? In the midst of fear, in the middle of the night, in the dark, they sang praises to God. They praised Him. They were grateful to God for having the opportunity to be in chains for speaking the gospel. And it dissipated their fear. Even Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's a little fearful, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I'm praising you, God, because you are with me. Even though I walk through the valley of, death, the, sh the, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And so thankfulness creates gratitude, generates contentment, and it causes peace. That that peace that God gives to you and to me, that everything's going to be okay according to his plan and his purpose, that God is with you in the difficult time. And thankfulness is a vehicle through which you can experience that kind of peace. And we, in our lives, have so much to be thankful for. Just the simple ability to to, to wake up and, and to be here. There's so many people in our congregation who physically aren't able to get here because of, of, of physical things happening. And, and there's, there's other people that, that, that are trying to get to, to one place or another or they want to be visiting relatives and they just can't. There's just so many things that we can look at and not necessarily compare but just go, dear God, thank you so much for the abilities that you give to me, for the family that you give to me, for this country that I live in. And while a lot of things are kind of unraveled and kind of messy, it's still a great place to live. It's still a wonderful blessing. Um, okay, so let's take a look then at um, a, a situation where the Israelites had forgotten to be thankful. Because you and I forget to be thankful all the time. We take so much for granted over and over. Um, there was a time when the, Egyptian, the Israelites, God's people, uh, were brought out of Egypt, and for 40 years, they dwelt in tents. 
They dwelt in tents. It was a 40-year trip, and by location, it actually would only take 11 days. They just were supposed to go from here to here. God led them south, and they wandered in the desert for 40 years. Can you imagine that? Especially if you were in the leadership team, and you're like, guys, we just need to go this way. And God's going, nope, you're going this way. And you're like, God, why? And there's fear. And so the Israelites left, and during this time, and actually beforehand, um, the, the Jewish people had seven festivals that some of them we still actually practice in the Christian church here. But the purpose of the festivals were to help teach the Israelites to lighten up. Really, that was it. The, the purpose was to honor God, but to teach them just to lighten up because they were slaves. They didn't celebrate anything. They didn't know how. They worked from sunup to sundown. No days off, nothing. They just didn't know how. And God gave them a lot of these, cele- these festivals as a celebration and really just to go, life is more than work. And so we're going to take a look at uh, Leviticus 23. If you, uh, I'll have the verses up here, but if you want, want to follow along on the Pew Bible, um, it's on page 102. And just an encouragement um, if you, to bring your own Bibles. You know, that we're, we, we're, one of our core values is biblical truth. And so if you have a Bible at home or even on your app, um, you can do that. But just, that's one of the, that's a practice. It's a really good practice. You can write in the notes. You know, if you, if you hear something, you can write in the Bible. If you bring a physical contact, don't write in the pew Bibles. I mean, you can, but <laughs> um, that's just an encouragement. Okay, so page 102 in the, the pew Bibles. And this verse is about the Feast of booths the feast of tabernacles uh and we'll look at this this feast that god gave to them really to help them remember to give thanks 365 Uh, and so we're going to learn three things from this next from leviticus 23 on really how do we thank god well the first one that we see in the verse is we thank god by giving back now this isn't a giving sermon this isn't now give your your money but it's just a realization that I'm thankful to God for what he's done by sending Jesus for the blessings, for everything he give, he's given me. And so giving back is an act of gratitude. It's that stepping forward. Uh, so verse 33, back up a little bit. The Lord says to Moses, say to the Israelites, on the 15th day of the seventh month, which is actually the month of September, the Lord's festival of tabernacles begins. It will last for seven days. The first day is a sacred assembly. Do no regular work. God had to tell the people, stop working. Go home. Relax. For seven days, present food offerings to the Lord. And on the eighth day, hold a sacred assembly and present a food offering to the Lord. It is the closing special assembly. Do no regular work. Remember, they're coming from Egypt where they, the word weekend, what are you doing this weekend? They're like, what's a weekend? What are you doing on your day off? Day off? Never heard of that before. Some of you are like that now. You're working constantly. It's not healthy. It's not good. God's carved out times of rest and solitude. So we thank God by by giving back. We present back to him uh, that which he's first given to us. Second thing is this. We thank God by celebrating. It's okay to celebrate, right? I, I, looking at some of the old paintings from the Middle, Age, Middle Ages or the, the turn of the or some of the older ones, man, those Christians, they look so miserable, right? Some of you here look so miserable. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're the best looking church in Chanhassen. Um, anyway, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, tell your face that sometimes. You know, we can celebrate. It's okay to, to be grateful for what God has done. Verse 39 says this. So God's continuing. So the beginning of the 15th day of the seventh month, after you've gathered the crops of the land, celebrate the feast to the Lord for seven days. The first day is a Sabbath rest, and the eighth day also is a day of Sabbath rest. On the first day, you are to take bunches of luxuriant trees from palms and willows and other leafy trees and rejoice before the Lord for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Celebrate in the seventh 
month. And within that celebration, they did so many fantastic things. They would have parades. They would put out banquets of food, whatever they had. They, they would have amazing um, uh, 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 performances, really, before the Lord dance and, and all kinds of different singing, all kinds of different things. Uh, they would have uh, different rituals that you could do that would celebrate. They had uh, water rituals, which back then, water was really scarce. You wouldn't, uh, taking a daily shower or bath was just not heard of. But all this celebration for what God has done in their life. So they just thanked God by giving back. They thanked God by celebrating. And then also during this feast, this festival, they thanked God by, and this is probably the most important one for us as Christ followers. They thanked God by just simply remembering what he's done. Just simply remembering what he's done. And this is how they did it. Verse 42 God says, live in temporary shelters for seven days. Now, these temporary shelters in, in, uh, in the Jewish faith, you might even hear this, is called a sukkot. It's a booth or it's a tent. Uh, we have a friend named uh, who's Sue Stebbing, and she, every year, would, on, on the actual day in September, would invite all of her family, all of her friends over, including us, and we would actually start in the morning, and we would actually build a big tent covering of wood and we'd be and we would lace it with vines and everything and then we'd gather underneath it for a celebration uh, dinner that was authentic and there's several years I'm sitting there going this thing's gonna fall on all of us <laughs> it's just like rickety and the whole thing but it was a reminder of this this tent this Sukkot that uh, that we we would celebrate under all native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters so your descendants and this is this is why this was important so that your descendants will know that i the lord had the israelites live in temporary shelters when i brought them out of egypt i am the lord your god and what's so cool about the church we do this every week we do this every week. We, we gather here under this big Sukkot, and because of your maintaining the mission, it's going to stand. Uh, <laughs> just had to throw that in there. Um, but we, this is like a big Sukkot, a, a big a, a tabernacle, and we gather here, we give back to God with our voices, with our hearts, with our prayers, and yes, with our giving, and we celebrate what God has done, and we rehearse the story of Jesus coming to die on the cross for us, so that you and I can live in heaven forever with him. And, and that's, that's for everybody. We celebrate basically the festival, the Feast of Tabernacles, all, uh, every week, all the, whenever we gather here in this place, because we as a church, you as individuals and families, I know you're thankful. I'm thankful. If you step back, even if you're in the, the worst of the worst of situations right now, there are things that you can be thankful for. Because you know at, a, at a, the, the baseline, the most important, is that God is with you in the struggle. And he's with you in the celebrating. Because being thankful puts you in a place. It puts you in a place of dependence on the Lord. It puts you in a place of contentment. It puts you in a place of humility. And don't forget to be thankful for what God has given you, eternal life that partially we experience here, but ultimately in heaven with him. And think about your life. Is there bitterness there? Are you angry that a situation hasn't turned out the way you planned? Is fear keeping you from stepping into your purpose? Maybe you just need to grab a thank you card write it to God. Say, God, I need to thank you because I haven't recently. And I know that in Isaiah 39, it says that because of my sin, my pride, my unthankfulness to you, that you don't hear my prayer. And so I want to, I want to say thank you for everything that you have given to me, to my family. Maybe it's time to write a thank you in your life to the one who loves you enough to send his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in all of this, we thank him and give him all glory and honor and praise. Amen.